Just about every video I've published here lately has used the new state management approach with the Signals and RxJS that I've been talking about incessantly. We're going to speed run the recap this time. For a proper explanation, you'll find a link to a full video in the description. Basically, sources of data or actions are represented by RxJS streams. These are subscribed in a reducer step where the appropriate state is set into a signal. Even though we have to manually manage some subscribes here, a big part of the motivation for this structure is to have something where you are directly using and understanding the underlying concepts. Which is important as I've been using a lot of these recent examples as part of my Angular course that I'm about to release. But whilst libraries and utilities might abstract some of these things away, essentially hiding what is really happening, they do also make your life a lot easier. Once you understand the concepts, there isn't really a need to type out the boilerplate for this reducer step every time. We can just abstract this away for convenience. Now, if any of you are fortunate enough to know Chao Tran, you know you're in for something good if a message like this hits your DMs. He sent me some examples of refactoring the state management approach I've been using to use the connect utility from the ng extension library. This is a library that contains a bunch of useful utilities for Angular apps, which was created by Chow and Anaya, but it is also open to contributions from the community generally as well. We are focusing on this one little connect utility though. In short, it takes the boilerplate from our reducer step here and makes it go away. It allows us to connect a signal to an observable stream. Anything that is emitted on that observable stream will be set into the state signal. The easy way to go about setting this up is just to take each of our reducers and supply the observable stream directly to the connect function. Rather than subscribing and updating the state signal ourselves, we just map the observable stream to whatever properties we want to update in the state signal. This is pretty nice already, but there still feels like there is some unnecessary boilerplate and duplication here. We can take this a step further. Instead of having all of these separate connect calls, we can do it all in one. The general idea here is that anything we emit on the observable stream will be set into the state signal. This can happen on one stream. It doesn't have to be on multiple different streams. We can use the RxJS merge operator to combine all of these streams together, which allows us to set it up like this instead. Same result, but we only need to call the connect function once now because we only have one stream to connect to the signal. We might go one step further still to make this look a bit cleaner and more obvious. In this case, all of these streams are actually just updating the status in the state signal, which is the only bit of state this service has. To organize things a bit better, we could group the streams that are updating the status together into a next status stream, then use that with the connect function. So we merge all of the streams together that update a particular bit of state, and then we merge those merged streams together into a single connect call. To see what this might look like in a slightly more complex service where we actually have multiple bits of state, let's take a look at this messages service. We can see we have two streams that update the messages value in the state signal and two streams that update the error values. We merge those together and supply it to the connect function. So not only does this remove a bunch of boilerplate, it also takes this section where we purposefully introduce imperative code in an otherwise declarative setup and it makes it slightly more declarative. It's still not really declarative because we still can't look at the declaration of our state values to see how they are calculated. If we look at our selector, we can see it is computed from this state signal, declarative so far. But now when we look at the state signal to see how the messages property is calculated, we have no idea. We just have its initial value. It is imperatively being updated somewhere else. So this still doesn't get around the need for this one section of code to be imperative, but with this setup, we can at least point to this specifically and say that this one stream is what determines how our messages property in the state signal is calculated. Again, it's still imperative, but it's close to being declarative. And for all the other benefits we are getting, I think this is well worth it. I'll have a link to ng extension in the description if you want to check it out, or maybe you even have your own utilities you think might make a good addition to the library. If you like this video, please consider a like or subscribe before you go, and I hope to see you back here again next week.